So, uh, hello everyone. Um, so, my name is Etain Kylie. I'm a lecturer in maths here in ATU Galway. And I'm going to talk to you today about Minecraft. And actually, it's, it, I think it's nice that it follows after Karen because it's actually a Microsoft product, uh, Minecraft, which I think a lot of people may not be familiar with. And it's, um, there's an education edition which we can use for free, you know, so all staff and students in, in uh, ATU are able to use this product. And so what I thought instead of me talking about something that I actually don't know very much about, um, I would bring along some first year students who have used it this year. Now CJ's put a phenomenal amount of work into building a scaled version of ATU Galway in Minecraft. So he's going to showcase that and Mary is going to give you some examples of how you can actually learn science, like uh, chemistry, or you can learn how to code in Python using uh, the pre-built subject kit worlds. So I'm gonna let the two of those navigate and introduce you to this world, something I don't know very much about, and uh, I hope you enjoy learning uh, from our students. Um, hello, Dad. There's just some context on why CJ started his world. So um, at the start of the year, we took a survey in our maths class, where there's like maybe 100 students, um, to see would they prefer to do a project based on Minecraft or microbits. And the majority of people sent back Minecraft because they were already familiar with it, so they thought it would be easier for them. There's some statistics about Minecraft that we'll just start with. Um, Minecraft is currently the second most popular video game of all time. Around 32% of the players are women. 131 million people play worldwide every month. Over 500,000 individuals play online simultaneously every day. It has an average of 110,000 concurrent viewers on Twitch. It's already embedded in the curriculum in Australia and Sweden, so they use it as a learning tool already. So I'm going to talk about the pre-built subject kits. So there's already these classes kind of built in when you get it, but you can make your own if you wanted to make it specific to your own class and slides for yourself. But there's things like you can learn Python or the block-based coding or JavaScript for computer science, or you can, there's this hour code that kind of includes them all. Or if you like science, you can go in and use the science worlds. There's chemistry, biology, different subjects. I had a third year um, forensic science student reviewed the chemistry to see if it was any use to anyone, and here is him using the different tools in it. So he enjoyed the aspects that you could go in, you could make your own element, like add the neutrons and the electrons, and see at what level does each element come out. You have the full access to the periodic table. So he used compound, he made, he made ammonia, um, and then used phosphorus ammonia to make something else. This lab, lab table would show you if you're making a, a solid or liquid or a gas, so the movement there is it's making a solid, so you can use experiments. And then you have NPCs that will give you a task to do, so you're not just wandering around aimlessly and not knowing what you're supposed to do. You can also use the material reducer, so that just breaks up what each element is made of into its individual things. He liked the breaking down the blocks into their elements, and he didn't like the equipment that was difficult to find, so that was if you made your own, you could refine that yourself. And he thought that it would be a very good tool, especially for first year chemistry when you're learning, or if you were a kinesthetic learner and you don't learn through slides or PowerPoints, you could just kind of go in and do it yourself, and then you might remember it better. And this is an example of some coding in Minecraft that I did. I made a random number generator and made random sums come up through if-else statements, which I learned in my own course. And then it was fun to kind of try and use that in a different area than just in class. So use coordinates, and this is the result of it. You just kind of go into the chat and you type a word, and then it automatically just sort of starts building in the sky. There's lots of access to pre-built code in it, so you could make it like rain chickens, even, or you can translate the different codes into each other. Like if you prefer to use blocks, but you want to learn Python, you could translate it over and see how each one is done. Um, Minecraft is free for any lectures. There's lots of resources and showing you how to use it. 
um, if you use OneNote or I think he'll show you how to code and to teach it to other people. So. It's my turn. Okay, so before I click over because it's going to start playing a video. I'm CJ. I'm the architect of what you're about to see. And uh, we can start with, this is the 409 bus that uh, I designed as a, a replica because the idea of the project is more for prospective students. So people can kind of come onto the college, navigate around before actually setting foot on campus. So I did it as best as I could to make it look accurate. So I added in informational bits like up, uh, upstairs says about this is the replica of the 409. It comes from Air Square because most students, especially like from other counties or other countries who haven't been to Galway in ever, could see it. See, it's easiest to navigate to Air Square, but then they don't know where to go from there. So this tells them which bus to get, where you'll end up. And then the idea is that it looks relatively similar to the campus, so you'll know your way around. And yeah, it's taken the whole year. I really didn't want to make an escape room, so I ended up building this. <laughs> and yeah, I made sure to add in the, the scale of GMIT, uh, ATU, I gotta get used to saying that. So uh, the scale of ATU, so you can really know what it feels like to take ages to walk to class, so you mm -hmm. can get your timing right. And yeah, I have the, the main entrance, I have all of the, the lecture halls, and I have the, the back reception built. I haven't got any of the externals yet. It was made using a mix of like, as you can see here, floor plans. So that's what I started with. And making it 3D was great. Really fun figuring it out. Uh, I used that, I used a mixture of aerial photos for the, the kind of perspective of it and how the roofs would look. I ended up using aerial photos more than Google Maps because Google Maps was done when the trees were mostly in bloom, so you couldn't see the, the walls and windows to see where anything was. But luckily enough, when you move the different time frames, you can find them without trees. And yeah, I came into the campus once a week and took about 40 odd photos to whatever I was working on that week. and would take it home and work away in little bits, trying to get little details like this. That is the side entrance where the visitor parking lot is. And that is the Minecraft version on the right. I tried to line it up so it looks relatively similar. I'm also a bit of a perfectionist. So when I was originally doing it, the, the poles, the bollards, were a bit closer to Minecraft. So I had to take two minutes to make them a bit further out. Just have to. I have that happening here and everything. I look, walk past doors and I'm like, oh, I have to go and add in an extra block now to push the doors back. <laughs> That's how I'm building it. So we have that. Here's another one of the, the reception I was talking about. Right now, it's more like a, a skeleton of the building. There's not too much kind of uh, decorative or design-wise. It just shows you where the rooms are. I have, I'd say about 90% of the rooms labeled for what number they are relative to the floor pans. And yeah, I can't, I'm limited by some things in Minecraft because obviously I can't put the, the informational poster or make circles. But I did as, as best as I could to try and get lighting everywhere. And yeah. Here's the one from the cafeteria to give you another kind of scope of it. And this is the for accessibility, for specifically for like wheelchair users and stuff. Apparently they, they have to send someone in previously to find where all the elevators would be before they come onto the campus and see if it's accessible for them. So with this, I have all the elevators in the right position and actually working. So you press a button and it moves you between the floors. So the, the idea is they can actually use this to see where everything is prior to coming to the campus, just like any other prospective student can. Pretty much. Uh, this is from the cafeteria to room 347, because an idea having is you can have a lecturer with a corresponding NPC who can tell you about the module and just anything they want you to say, really. This is my example of how long it takes to walk to class. <laughs> As you can see, it's room 347, made it as accurate as I could. And this is our lovely Attain here as an NPC. So it's what she wanted it to say. And the Learn More button actually links you to her section of the course. So it links you to the module. So it's a nice kind of interactive element through that. And then we have user feedback, because we've tested it for a few people. I've tried to get as big a gauge as I could. So I showed it to. Uh, I had one friend who's a prospective student who actually lives in Romania. He's thinking of coming over and studying, so he really loved it because he, he's never been to Ireland. Uh, I've shown it to past students who loved reliving past glory. Like, oh, I had my classes here. Oh, this is where I'd go get a chicken roll. 
<laughs> random things. But they loved it and they'd all have a laugh about it. And then we actually did a hosted demo for some lectures the other day. And uh, when they got the hang of navigating the, the keyboard and the mouse at the same time, it was all right. <laughs> We're shockingly bad. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Originally, Attain wanted like uh, arrows on the floor, like big magenta arrows pointing you and signs everywhere. I told her it wouldn't help her because she keeps looking at the ceiling. <laughs> so yeah, there's, so far it's good positive feedback. Obviously, my favorite one is that one down there. It says, I want to be able to fly too. Everybody can agree to that whenever you want to go to work, eh? Pretty much it's, so far so good. There's a few stuff like uh, you saw earlier coming off the bus, there's just a quick little teleport pad to bring you over the wall. That's placeholder at the moment, just trying to figure out because uh, I have a scoreboard system in it, which you'll see next, because I had to make a concept, like a maths concept, for maths class. So I made a maths mini game. And coming off the bus, you had to be assigned to a scoreboard originally before you get assigned to another one. So I was trying to bug fix it myself as I was building it. So I was my own worst enemy building it. So coming off, you, you get assigned to one. You can choose to free roam and explore, or you can choose to come here, which is the group. This is the admin booth, which controls everything with code blocks. But uh, I'm still thinking of refining it and doing more with it. But this is the basically works. So I have four teams. Each one assigns you to the team of that color, puts you over the fence, and ready to start the game. I have about 160 NPCs put in here. Uh, there's about 40 for each color to give everybody a fair chance. Each one has a maths question and three possible answers. The way I've designed it is it's a group activity, and it's kind of a versus. So the NPC will not let you know if you've scored or not, but they will teleport away. So the idea is anybody can interact with anybody else's color. So you can go and stop the enemy team from scoring by getting rid of their NPCs, by answering all their questions wrong. But if they manage to answer one of the questions right, the enemy team gets the point. So the idea is just the, the madness that ensues from that. I'm imagining about 20 odd people on each team running through. It's going to be crazy. Hope someday I'll get, to, I'll get it to work. Uh, but yeah, time limit is, and then afterwards you can teleport everybody back, let everybody know how the, the game went. There's a button to restart it, so everybody can choose to go again, or they can just <coughs> free roam and explore, which is that button there that just releases everybody. That's, uh, yeah. There's so much code in the background of that. That took me 10 hours on a Sunday. <laughs> I started at uh, 10 a.m. and didn't finish till 10 p.m. I got Mary to come in and help me for a little bit, otherwise it would have been about 12 o'clock I finished. I just gave her like a list of the, the maths questions for the NPCs. It took the longest. I was just like, just, just pick one at random and give the question and I'll put the code in after. <sighs> I'm proud that it actually works. And then there's the, the next steps. So there's a promotional video theory. Uh, there's alignment in science and computing. There's learning the innovation module, which is a new name for it. There's team building games and reusable objects, escape rooms and puzzles. Tain is obsessed, obsessed with escape rooms. I really never want to build one. <laughs> never want to. <laughs> uh, that, uh, that's everything. I hope I didn't do it too fast. Uh, I challenged myself. I was like, two minute warning? No, no two minute warning. <laughs> Are remarkable. You're fantastic. Um, I'm sure all the students in your class are fully engaged with being uh, creating all of these. Um, are they all doing it? Is it no, sure? not, no, no. Yeah. I was the only one that have to do it. Okay, yeah. but are you okay. they all they all on now? different ones? Yeah, but actually, we ended up doing more micro bit stuff in the end. I kind of opened it up, you know, to see which one they like to do. And you saw Ashley yesterday presented on the yeah. micro bits in science, you know, so these are all new as well to me, so it's a big learning curve. And sometimes when you put something like this out and you say, anyone, and not every year you'll meet someone like CJ who's going to take this on and, and create something like this, you know, so I felt we had to give this a, a, a form to the show and, and yeah. because of the reusability of it. That, okay. um, yeah, so, uh, and then what Mary did is she actually, because I can't test the words, I'm just too awkward. <laughs> <laughs> She's like a new woman. Can you hear? Is this going through the sound? It 
take your toys. Yes. It's coming through. It is perfect. Sorry, you Yeah. So I guess um, these are the these are the target audience, and it's, there's a mismatch between us and them because they are gamers and they are they know this world. They can navigate it. So they're interested in it, and I think that's the very first starting point of learning, isn't it? Having an interest. And along the way, as Mary kind of says, that you you like to learn through doing, don't you, Mary? So along the way, you find yourself learning and and kind of innately by by kind of combining these two worlds. Yeah. So uh, it's not for everyone, you know. It's it's something that I thought we we just showcase and, and show that it exists and. And then maybe over the summer, so we might have a go with themselves. I know my own little lad in seven is obsessed with Minecraft, and it'd be a way for us to kind of connect as well. And you know, I could do a little bit of coding, and, and you know, it can be a, a positive game timing, I suppose, on technology experience as well. Yeah, uh, thinking about it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just thinking it's a transferable as well into other disciplines. But you, I suppose, as you say, you have to meet the students where they're at, and. Yeah. They, you know, but providing those opportunities to them, you know, giving them options and choice. Did you, you liked that approach, did you? Um, it was nice, yeah. Yeah, been given the, I suppose, the choice as to how... Definitely surprised going to maths class and be like, oh, now you can make something in Minecraft. Yeah. 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 Especially fresh out of the lean circle, like, you're killed as you work in the higher and maths and you're just lucky because when you get to college, like, it's not going to be as easy when you get in and you're like, so, so you're working in Minecraft. <laughs> yeah. We do do real So math. cool. <laughs> <laughs> but it just makes it more interesting, doesn't it? And I suppose you're, you're really learning, you are learning about maths, you know, and about logic and design and spatial awareness. And, you know, you're even thinking about the first year experience. It's incredible how you thought about what students need and what might help them. From experience, it's everything I wanted on day one. Yeah. <laughs> trying to find my, my lectures, apparently everybody has the same problems. I'm like, I must do something to help. I know. We must involve um, whoever looks after the um, the induction and the orientation in GMIT. Yes, you know, Student Services run a first five weeks program. Maybe their involvement in some sort of a Minecraft experience yeah. for first years. Wouldn't it be amazing? Yeah, yeah. Or Happy Campus. Or Happy Campus. Sorry, yeah. I'm just trying to think which avenue it could be promoted, Jessica. Yeah. Yeah, maybe to a healthy campus. Yeah, definitely. If you don't mind, I'd just like to read a few comments oh, from yeah. the team site. It's just because I don't want you guys to miss out on this. So um, it's all praise, all around. Uh, well done, great for student induction. Wow, great that um, Minecraft meta uh, metaverse of AT hallway is amazing. You can see all the hard work and long hours that was put into it. Super well done. This looks really interesting. Great potential use for student orientation, especially around accessibility. Uh, such a creative, engaging learning experience for your learners, um, the team. Uh, fantastic students demonstrating what they have created. Well done, Mary and CJ. Great presentation. I'd love to see your work with bright futures ahead. Uh, well done, Mary and CJ. Very impressive design. Uh, best wishes with your studies. Uh, brilliant work. Excellent work. Well done. Fantastic. <laughs> Have to have you back again. <laughs> no, I love it's brilliant to have students as part of the conference. Like always, we say when we run events, how can we involve students? How can students showcase their work? And we're always looking for opportunities. So thanks, Etain, for stepping forward and providing your students to be part of this very special occasion. So. And uh, the more students involved we can get, the better, you know, so it's, it's fantastic. Part. Sadly, it's in the top corner, the small one. Okay. So oh, yeah, yeah, that's fab. Yeah, this I see it. This is the scope of what I've actually made. When I explained that it's the main building, the electric yeah. halls in the back, mm -hmm. this is actually the bird's eye view on it. And uh, what I started with yeah, is the equivalent of that, as you can see. Yeah. It's called Blocks of Grass. It's just complete infinite flat band. That's what I started with, and that's what I ended up with. Fantastic. And the idea is, at some point, maybe you campus, whatever else. Now there's a lady here, a healthy campus, Jessica, who, who might have some funding to help support <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely interested. Um, <laughs> this is a worthwhile investment, isn't it? <laughs> we'll have to have a meeting. <laughs> very good. Okay, thanks very much. Um, did you want to say any more? No, no, that, well, I guess the thing is, there, I only showed science and computing, there's history, there's all sorts of things, there's lovely, there's like, 
build a bee kind of be a bee. There's lovely worlds out there. Wow. I guess the thing is just be brave and jump in and have a go, you know. And uh, I think the students are forgiving. Um, it, it, and actually, I, you know, it, it, the fact that you're trying, I think, is, is the main thing, you know, rather than being some sort of Minecraft expert. We're never going to be like them. We're never going to be as good as them. Yeah. Or things like that. Trying to, to meet them maybe where they're at. Kind of. Yeah, I think it maybe breaks down some boundaries and builds some trust, you know. And I think that's a nice starting point with, uh, with learning. Yeah, brilliant. Well done again. Thanks so much.